What is up, it's CJ here, and today we're talking about documentary and interview style shooting. Now, I do this quite often, sometimes for my own projects, sometimes for other people's projects. This type of shooting comes in handy for a variety of different shoots and projects. So it's something that you're gonna to need to know, especially if you wanna be a videographer or become a cinematographer in some way. So today I'm gonna to show you behind the scenes, some of me setting up, and also we'll just talk through the whole entire process and kind of what my mindset is when I'm setting up an interview. All right, so we have everything set up for our interview, but I wanna walk you through it step by step so you know what it takes to get this type of setup and get this type of look. All right, so this is a quick time lapse of everything that I do when I have a shoot. So I come in, kind of look at the area and figure out how I want to set this up. I know that I want the subjects to sit right there, but he's kind of setting it up a little bit wrong. So I kind of direct them and tell them where to go. Um, but then I decided to put my main camera, or that's actually gonna be my B shot, uh, but I decided to put that camera right in the center. So I'm gonna pan back and forth. Uh, or slide back and forth and then I begin to set up my EOS R. Now my EOS R is basically the best camera that I have so I put my monitor on there, I put my audio on there, um, that is my A camera and I just look at that for all of my kind of direction. I want everything to kind of match that camera. So set that up next and then I check the height and everything. I actually should have brought the slider up a little bit in this scenario but that tripod was really bad it wasn't mine it was pretty bad um, and it was like very flexible I also set up some pipe and drape on the side where all the light was coming in so that I can control the light on my subjects so then I begin to set up my lighting and that is my key light and I had somebody stand in so that I could actually see what it looked like so I set that light up, then I began to set up my key light in the back, or excuse me, my hair light in the back. And then I had two subjects sit in the place where I wanted them to be. And this is where I kind of fine tune everything, get my focus right, get my tilt right, headroom right, and just make sure that everything is in focus. And if somebody moves, that it will look right. Then I brought my two subjects in and they were ready to go. But first a disclaimer, I just want you to know that this is something that I've been contracted to do. I've been working with this organization for a few years. I'm contracted to work with them, and this job is a part of that contract. So this is not like a leisure job, something that I just went out to do just for fun. This is something that I actually was contracted to do. Also, you know, the, uh, the mask thing. Um, I wear masks so I can protect myself and people around me. There may be some people who are not wearing masks. I can't make people wear masks. I just prefer to wear a mask when I'm out in public and around people. So if you are in public and you need to do shoots, maybe you're contracted to do work, make sure you are being safe as possible. I'm back to the video. The first thing you want to figure out is your location. This is a wide open space and we wanted to make sure we use this background. We thought this background would be a good texture uh, it will look great when it's blurred out. Uh, so this is the main focus is using this background. Uh, then we decided to bring in a rug. So because this room is so wide open, you can get a lot of echoes. So bringing in a rug can help dampen some of that sound and make that sound a lot better. So the room that we chose is a very interesting room. It's a wide open space that, I mean, it's almost like a warehouse and if you know those rooms rooms like that are not treated for sound so that's a big issue so we decided to bring in the rug that really dampens the sound if you can bring anything you can around the area that you are shooting in if it's that large uh, to make sure you dampen the sound as much as possible lavalier microphones tend to do well in those scenarios where it's really close to the face and there's not a lot of room for the voice to echo it picks it up and that's pretty much it. If you were to use an overhead or a shotgun mic in this scenario, you may get a little bit more echo because your microphone is a little bit further away from the subject. There. Also, we had a ton of light coming in from this area over here. We wanted to control that light a little bit, but we want some of that light to spill off into the background. So we put down some pipe and drape, something to kind of flag this light, 
and then uh, opened up this end right here so that light could come through and shine onto the background. Uh, but it blocked a lot of the light that was coming on to the subject. There's a huge wide open space in a window uh, that comes in there and floods that entire area with light. So what I decided to do was take the available pipe and drape and just put that up to flag some of that light. Now you may not have something in your situation to flag light, uh, but get anything you can. I always like to take around some dark fabric. I keep that in my bag so that I can hang it up on light stands or anything I can to flag light and control the light as much as possible. So the point of that is just to really control the light so I can get the type of look and the type of feel that I want in my shot. So a lot of people, when they see a nice location like this, they try to take the subject and put them directly onto the background and that doesn't give you any depth to your shot. What you wanna do is position the subject further away from the background and also about twice the distance that you would uh, put them from the camera. So we have the space between the camera and the subject and then we have twice as much or even three times as much behind them uh, to give you some more space and some more depth to your shot. All right, now it's time to go into framing and composition. Basically for this setup, you wanna make sure that you're framing your subject on the shadow side. I do this all the time. It gives you a little bit more contrast when you're shooting your subject. So now when you look at different footage, it took me a long time to notice this, but if you look at interviews, if you look at any type of professionally done uh, shoot, you can really see that this is a common occurrence in most all television and film that they shoot on the shadow side of the face. I would take my footage and match it up against like professional videos and I was like, why does it look like that? And I noticed that it's because I'm not shooting on the shadow side of the face. Once I started to notice that, I started to light my scenes like that, it started to look more cinematic. We also want to position the subject so that they're looking at the person who was interviewing them. So we set them directly across from the person who was interviewing them, and then we set the camera on this side of the face because we know we want our light to come from that side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick you up, let's not drop you. So if you look at this, it just looks flat. It looks like really, really flat. There's no depth to my face. When you bring it this way, you can see the shadows enhance the depth. It gives you a little bit more contrast and a little bit more, it just makes the shot a little bit more interesting. So let's put, let's put you back. So we have two camera setups here. Um, and what we do first is we set up the wider shot first. So this is shooting with a 24 millimeter and it's gonna be tracking back and forth. This is gonna be our shot to cut to, the shot that we know is gonna get everything in frame. So if you look at this shot, it's nice and wide. It gets both of them into the shot and also is dynamic by moving back and forth. This shot over here is a little bit tighter. Make sure we got a nice close up shot and also further on to the shadow side of the face so when you punch in on this shot it's gonna give you some more depth to the shot and also some more contrast and that's what really gives you that cinematic look. Position of the camera is super important in this situation I decided to make the camera eye level because of the context that we were talking about and moving the camera around vertical left and right it gives and adds something to the scene. Lower makes me seem larger than life. Higher makes me seem small and the world is so big. And eye level just makes it seem a little bit more personal. It makes us on the same level. It allows you to be able to view things from my viewpoint. So you have to think about your camera setup and angles so that you're telling a story with your cinematography. The position of this camera is very important. We wanna make sure we're at about eye level or position the camera to make sense. You wanna make sure you position it um, to give a certain feel for your interview. Maybe the person who you're interviewing is a hero and you wanna have like a lower shot so you can kind of bring that kind of larger than life feel to the person. But in this particular case, we wanted to have an eye level view and in most cases you will have an eye level view. Our second camera is very important for these type of shoots because we want to make sure we have something to cut to and this is the perfect shot to cut to something sliding something dynamic something that adds a little bit to the shot 
and it's not just a boring cut back and forth. If you have plenty of interesting and good B-roll, you don't really need two cameras in your interview, but having two cameras allows you to cut between, even actually shorten down some of the talking, cut out things that are unnecessary. Having two cameras allows you to be able to make those cuts actually seem less like edits and more like you just switch to a different camera. All right, now we go into lighting. Lighting is very simple in this case we have a two light setup it's actually a three light setup if you include the light from the window uh, our first light is what is actually lighting up the background um, so you can see this is lit but if we were to bring this over more this will really cut out some of the light that's on that background and then our main light our key light of this softbox here I'm using the Godox SL60 watt with the Easy Glow softbox and a grid. The reason why we have the grid is because we don't want this light to spill anymore into the background. We have this positioned where the light would be coming from in the shot. You can see that the light is kind of spilling in from this side. So we want to make that seem like it is coming from the same light. If you look at this shot, you can tell that the light back here is coming in from the right side. So we bring our key light and we put it on the right side as well. So what is lighting the background kind of seems like it's lighting the subjects as well. So along with just trying to find the position of your light, you just want to make sure it's motivated. I knew that the biggest light source was coming from the big window that we had. So I wanted to make sure I set the light on that same side. If you flip it and put it on the other side, it looks like the light, you can like tell that, oh, there's light coming from that side. Like it's a, he set the light up on that side. It's more obvious, but when you set up a light, it makes the audience feel a certain way. They may not know why they feel a certain way, but you knowing what makes audiences feel different ways can make your films a little bit more impactful and also just a little bit more professional. Just make sure you're approaching your shoots in a way that uh, tells a story. So you wanna make sure that the lighting the setup, everything kind of makes sense and feels right. So, now over here we have the hair light. This gives us a little bit more separation from the background. So we point this directly at the back of our subject's heads, position it pretty high in comparison to where they are sitting at, and then we point that directly at their heads. Uh, we try to keep this light down as much as possible. So I have it at about 20%. And that light really adds some depth to the shot as well. So let's talk about camera settings real quick. So camera settings are super important. You wanna make sure you set your camera settings properly. So I am actually shoot it, shooting at 1 50th of a second because I am shooting at 24 frames per second or 23.98 frames per second. And then my aperture is actually at, let's see, it's actually, actually at 1.5 back here. And then we have the ISO at 160. If you look at our white balance, I have the white balance set to Kelvin at 5200. And that is because I don't want this white balance to be different from this white balance. So I set both of the settings to be the same. All right, so now for the audio setup. And we have two lavalier microphones. Uh, so we're gonna set both of these on our subjects. And if you don't have two of these, uh, the best practice is to make sure you have an additional recorder or additional microphone. So if one messes up, you have another one for backup. Since we have two lavalier microphones, we're just gonna use these two labs. Um, normally, I would do one lav and an overhead, but since we have two people talking, we're gonna capture that audio from them separately from two microphones. What I do is I go ahead and set these labs on them, then I put in my receivers, and once the receivers are in, I can check the levels on my mix pre. So as soon as I have all that set up and I get them sit seated down in the chair, I have my interviewer sit there and talk to them. If I'm the interviewer, I will sit there and talk to them while, while I look at the levels. Now levels are super important. Right now I'm looking at my levels to kind of give you an idea of where you need to be. I usually don't want my levels to go above about negative 12. I feel like the sweet spot is between negative 30 and negative 12. Um, when you're talking low and low, low like this, you want to be at about negative 30. And when you're talking high, you want to be at about negative 12. And that's where I try to keep my recordings. There's a ton of information out there. I would research some more. That's just something that I've learned, something that kind of works for me. In post, I can bring that gain up. Also add a compressor and do some things to the audio to make it sound nice, crisp, and clean. And that will allow me to 
play around with the levels and see where they are at and make sure they fall in the right range. So I talk to them for a little bit, try to make them laugh, try to see where they peek at, and then I go into the interview questions. All right, so lastly, it's time to shoot the interview. And you wanna make sure that you are listening as much as possible. You don't wanna be talking while you're recording. You don't wanna get a lot of your voices. So ask them the questions that you wanna ask them, but be quiet. Don't do any responses, don't say anything. Uh, try to just listen and look them in their eye and allow them to know that you're listening to them, that, to encourage them to keep talking, but try to keep your reactions and your uh, responses to a minimum so that you don't mess up the audio. It's a very hard thing to do when you're really into the story. Let them finish talking and listen and then go into the next question because that can really mess up a good interview. I hope this behind the scenes really helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions about it in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.